Whatever had entered the scarred lands hadn't taken any care to hide the fact. The tracks were not hard to miss and unlike anything we'd seen before. I'd led more patrols to the edge of the scar than anyone save our warder Grant, and on occasion we'd run afoul a man or two seeking some reputation by taking one of us down or, better yet, killing Grant himself. But that day, looking upon the strange prints in the hard soil of the scar, I would have liked to have had our warder with us. Tracking the creatures that morning, we entered a shallow, narrow canyon, alert but calm. As we cleared the far side and before we knew what was happening, two massive creatures leapt at us. Morning shadows danced in my eyes as my three companions, Jeros, Kaelin, and Selena, all rolled out of the way and came up with blades in their hands. Jeros called my name to warn me. I turned in time to avoid a heavy blow from a great spiked hammer. Shuffling backward, I quickly regained my balance, drew a knife, and let it fly. The blade bounded harmlessly off the beast's armor-like skin. My skies, I thought. These had to be Bardin. Quiet given escape from the board. What were they doing here in the scar? A scream rose up to my right. I looked fast and saw Kaelin going down in a spray of blood. I took my other knife, aiming this time for the second creature's ear as it stared down into the limp body of my friend. My dagger entered its skull, dropping it instantly. Its companion roared and bore down on me, heavy feet thundering across the hard-baked soil. I set for the charge, raising my sword but knew it would trample me under, crushing me beneath its immense girth. Then from my right, two more shadows flickered. In the most elegant attack I have ever seen, something Grant would have been proud to see, learn from our countless hours of training. Selena dove at the barred in, slicing across the back of the creature's left foot. I heard the severing of tendons. The quiet given fell hard, its heavy form raising mounds of dirt as it crashed to the earth. But it did not stay down. Rising fast and loping towards me, Jeros then leapt on the creature's back and drove his knives into the base of its skull. A great scream ascended the bright blue skies as the Bardin tumbled a last time, convulsing for a few moments before lying still forever. We rushed to Kaelin's side. He was badly hurt but breathing. We made him as comfortable as we could. Then my friends looked at me, their eyes heavy with worry and fear. I managed, as I often did, to put my friends at ease, invoking the name of our warder, who was a serious, dangerous man. We then quickly built a stretcher, and I gave them instruction to get Kaelin home while I sought out Grant to tell him what had happened. But there was more I did not say. Barely traceable in the hard earth of the scar, I'd seen what my friends had not. Perhaps my further years of training helped me notice it. But I was sure and frightened by the thought that there was a third outsider here in the Scar. One whose tracks I'd seen near those that belonged to the Bard Inn, but couldn't identify. One whose tracks disappeared a few strides away as though it had left the quiet in place to ambush us. So I ran, knowing by the turn of the sky that our warder would be on his way to the cradle by now. For days, I'd move fast, sleeping little. Finally, I slowed as I came near that place where I myself had once lain, in the hollow of the great dead tree. I arrived in time to see the man I thought of as my father, rescue another orphan and take it into his arms. I felt relieved to see him and the child alive, and yet I needed to warn him. Something had changed. 